Hello friends, welcome back to our MOOCs course on the topic of fundamentals of nuclear power generation. Uh, in our last lecture, we discussed about the topic of nuclear fission, which is a part of our third module and today we are uh, targeting to finish this particular module. That is, uh, in this second lecture, we are looking to finish our third module on nuclear fission. As a brief recap of whatever we have done in the last lecture, you are introduced to the topic of nuclear fission. We now know that whenever a particular nucleus, a fissile nucleus that is, when it absorbs a neutron, generally a thermal neutron, uh, it uh, is excited to a very high energy level and uh, accordingly it can go through two different kinds of phenomenon. One possibility is that it can release that energy in the form of gamma photon and come back to the ground state in the form of another isotope of the parent nucleus itself. But the more probable option for the fissile nucleus is for this to undergo the fission process that is to get splitted into two lighter nucleus or lighter uh, some other kind of isotopes. So, according to the nature of these materials, you are introduced to these definitions of fission, fissionable, fissile and fertile materials, uh, where the term fissionable is associated with any particular nucleus which can be fissioned with respect uh, by striking it either by thermal neutron or first neutron, but fissile the term is uh, used exclusively for the nucleus which can undergo fission only after absorbing a thermal neutron and also can sustain a chain reaction following that fission. Whereas, fertile are those which cannot be fissioned through a thermal neutron, but can be converted to a fissile isotope. Like uh, the examples as we have seen uranium and that is 92 U 235 is the only naturally occurring fissile isotope, but there can be couple more which are generally artificially produced, but are very commonly used. One is uranium 233 and other is the wear grade isotope which is plutonium that is 94 Pu 239. Whereas, an example of fertile material there are several but very common example is uh, generally thorium, thorium 232, thorium is actually having an atomic number of 90 and other is uranium 238 that is 92 U 238, where this uh, uranium 238 can be converted to plutonium 239 and thorium 232 can be converted to uranium 233. Just one odd coincidence you can look at. If you uh, go through this example, say first uh, for uranium 233, it is having 92 number of protons and how many neutrons it has? It has 141 neutrons in its isotope. Now, come to uranium 235, again it is having 92 protons and 143 number of neutrons. And in case of plutonium 239, it is having 94 protons and uh, if I calculate it is 145 I think number of uh, neutrons it has. Whereas, now if you take a look for this two fertile isotopes for thorium 232 it is having 90 number of protons and 142 number of neutrons and for uranium 238 it is having 92 number of protons and 146 number of uh, neutrons. Can you uh, see this coincidence? It is quite odd, I do not have any explanation for this, but generally for the fissile isotopes you will get see there is a odd even or even odd kind of combination in the nucleus that is even number of protons and odd number of neutrons. Whereas, for the fertile isotopes you have an even even combination that is both even number of protons and even number of neutrons. Again I repeat I do not have an explanation for this if anything at all exists. Uh, nuclear physicists may give some idea or it may be just a coincidence, but uh, this is a quite interesting uh, thing to observe. Now, if we move further, once you are introduced to this topic of uh, fissile and fertile isotopes, then uh, the next thing that we discussed is the fission fragments. Fission fragments refer to the two daughter isotopes which are produced because of the fission of some kind of fissile isotopes. Fission fragments uh, are uh, generally radioactive in nature and therefore, they go through several steps of decay. But uh, another interesting fact is that 
fission fragments generally vary in their mass numbers or it is highly unlikely that both the fission fragments will be having the same mass number rather they vary in the magnitude of their mass numbers and the difference between their mass number keeps on reducing with increase in the mass number of the parent isotope. That is the difference between the mass number of two uh, fission fragments produced by uranium 233 fission uh, will be uh, higher than the same for plutonium 239. Then we discussed about the effect of uh, energy of the neutron on uh, on the fission on the cross sections actually I should have written here the dependence of uh, En on sigma f and not what is written here. We now know that we can uh, get generally three kinds of regions where the most interesting one is the initial 1 by v region which refers to this particular part where the both fission and non fission capture cross section almost linearly reduces with the energy of the neutron and the most interesting of that is generally the thermal neutron part because there the inner fission cross section is found to be quite high. And we finish the last class about uh, discussing or introducing the term moderator. Moderator refers to the uh, material which is used in the nuclear reactor to reduce the kinetic energy of the neutrons so that it can be converted from initial fast neutron levels to the thermal neutron levels and thereby increasing the possibility of uh, fission because at uh, we always have to remember that at lower energy level the fission cross section is much higher. Possible reason can be lower energy level means lower velocity of the neutron and therefore, the neutron has much longer time to spend in close proximity of the nucleus and therefore, much uh, bigger chance of having any kind of interaction. So, today we shall be focusing primarily on this topic of moderator and see we shall be seeing how we can reduce the energy or uh, at least we shall be doing lots of mathematics here to see how can we calculate what is the energy the neutron will shall be having or neutron will be having after undergoing collision with any kind of moderator nucleus. So, I am starting with a slide with which I finished the last lecture. Uh, we, I have to do lots of mathematics here, but uh, it is quite odd to present that on slides but uh, I do not have the option of using board and that is why I am trying to keep it uh, as much interactive or as much step by step as I can. Please uh, try to follow the discussions. Here we have one uh, neutron shown by that red dot of mass m which is moving with a velocity v and it is approaching a nucleus which is initially stationary capital V is the velocity of this nucleus which is equal to 0 and its mass is m. And uh, once this neutron uh, collides with this nucleus, then it transfers a part of its momentum and kinetic energy to the nucleus and accordingly both of them gets deflected to certain angles like here theta refers to the angle with which the neutron gets deflected from its original uh, path of motion. V prime small v prime is the velocity of the neutron after collision whereas capital V prime is the velocity of the nucleus. Now, uh, if we uh, write the conservation of energy then uh, the conserve as this being elastic scattering or elastic collision both kinetic energy and momentum will be conserved. So, as per the conservation of energy initial before collision the energy is half m v square this part where 1 refers to that uh, state before collision 2 refers to the state after collision. So, after collision total energy is the summation of the kinetic energy of the neutron which is this and the kinetic energy of the nucleus both being equal let us use this term E L to denote the inner total energy uh, available in the system uh, before and after collision. And as per the conservation of momentum initial momentum is m uh, v or the momentum of the neutron alone and after collision the momentum is the summation of momentum plus for neutron and momentum of the nucleus both should be conserved. While we can continue with uh, this particular approach, but uh, this is generally termed the lab scale approach here this subscript L refers to the lab scale, uh, but generally it is quite uh, convenient to do the rest of this mathematical procedure following something called the center of mass approach. Center of mass is an hypothetical object which is having the total mass of the system like here this C m refers to the center of mass this hypothetical object is having the total mass of the system that is its mass will be small m plus capital M that is mass of neutron plus mass of nucleus 
and also it is moving with such a velocity that its uh, momentum is equal to the total momentum of the system. Then uh, for the center of mass we can write its total momentum will be small m plus capital M which is its mass into some velocity which is moving this should be equal to the momentum of the system which is uh, the momentum of the neutron alone before collision. The center of uh, accordingly we can calculate the velocity of the center of mass. Now, the center of mass approach has certain advantage if we choose this one as the frame of reference accordingly we can calculate the relative velocities for both neutron and nucleus and as we shall be see seeing shortly it will provide you three different advantages firstly total momentum of the CM system or as per the center of mass system total momentum will be equal to 0. The magnitude of the center of mass velocities uh, that is magnitude of the velocities of neutron and nucleus as per this new approach that will not change after collision only change will be in the directions and thirdly total energy of the CM system will be less than the lab system because the center of mass itself is moving. Yes. We shall be proving all of them. Now, this is the modified situation before and after collision as per the center of mass system. Here small u refers to the relative velocity of the neutron as uh, with respect to the center of mass and this capital U or minus capital U refers to the relative velocity of the center of ma relative velocity of the nucleus with respect to again the center of mass minus sign indicates that it is in the here we have taken the direction for motion of neutron to be positive accordingly capital U is negative. And after collision they get, you get some velocity as small u prime and capital U prime and theta c refers to the angle as per the center of mass system. So, now small u can be and this being relative velocity of the neutron is respect to the C m. So, it will be of course, velocity v minus v of C m and putting the expression for v of C m we get this. Similarly, capital U will be equal to v capital V minus V C m capital V is 0 remember the nucleus we have assumed to be stationary. So, capital V this is equal to 0 and accordingly uh, we get an expression for capital U as well. So, now we know the relative velocities or the velocities for both neutron and nucleus as per the center of mass system. So, that total momentum we can calculate according to the CM system should be equal to small m into small u multi plus capital M into capital U and if you put the expression it is equal to 0 which is the first point I have mentioned as per the center of mass system total momentum will be equal to 0 both before collision and after collision. Now, total kinetic energy as per the CM system should be equal to the same for uh, neutron plus the same for the nucleus. Here of course, we are using small u and capital U because we are doing everything with respect to the CM system and accordingly we can get a simplified expression and we can relate that to the original velocity of this neutron which is the velocity as per the lab scale. And here uh, we rearrange the term so that we get finally mu by small m into E l. Remember E l was the kinetic energy as per the lab system which was half m v square small v square. Here mu can be seen as a reduced mass which allows us to compare the kinetic energy across both frames of reference and it is given as small m into capital M by small m plus capital M. Now, one important uh, you can say this approximation, but this is quite uh, it is not a bad one actually. We know that mass of a neutron is slightly above 1 amu, whereas the mass of the nucleus is uh, it will be quite close to the atomic mass of this one expressed in terms of amu. So, it is uh, very much uh, likely that if we get this quantity this is most likely to be equal to the atomic this is most likely to be equal to the mass number of uh, that particular nucleus. Accordingly, we do the substitutions to get mu equal to a by 1 plus a. So, putting this back into the original expression, we get the energy as per the center of mass system divided by the energy of the uh, with respect to the lab scale system is approximately equal to a by 1 plus a. Now, whatever may be the value of a, surely this E C m will be less than E l that is this ratio always has to be less than 1 because the denominator is always higher than numerator. So, that proves the third point that I have mentioned earlier the energy at with respect to the same system should be equal to or should be less than rather with respect to the for the compared to the energy with respect to the lab scale system. And the difference being the center of mass itself is moving and so itself is having some kinetic energy. Let us move forward now 
and the same diagrams are reproduced here and we are writing the conservation of momentum in terms of the CM system. So, small u prime and capital U prime refers to the velocities of neutron and nucleus respectively with respect to the CM system. So, we write the conservation of momentum uh, in this form. Now, we this being a vector equation we can always uh, separate that into as per the components uh, and sticking to a two dimensional representation. This is according to let us say this is our x direction and this is our y direction. So, accordingly before collision the momentum of the system is equal to m into u contributed by the neutron and this, this one is contributed by the nucleus the direction being opposite we are having this minus sign in between and after collision uh, this u prime is having the cos theta c component in this direction and again this is also having the cos theta c component in this direction. So, we get this particular expression and uh, similarly we can uh, also represent or uh, we can also get the y component of the same equation uh, before collision both the components that is neutron and nucleus are moving in the x direction. So, the y component is 0, but after collision we can have an y component. So, from the second part we get u prime is uh, nearly equal to a into capital U prime and putting that back into the first expression we get small u is equal nearly equal to a into capital U. Now, conservation of kinetic energy as per the CM system conservation of kinetic energy or energy as per the CM system can be calculated as uh, this is the kinetic energy before collision, this is the kinetic energy after collision. Small u and capital U are the velocities with respect to the CM system before collision, small u prime and capital U prime are the velocities after collision with respect to the CM system. So, by as kinetic energy has to be conserved similar to momentum we uh, can equate them and by using these substitutions we finally, attain at this which proves capital U and small u prime are equal and same applies to small u and small u prime. That means, we can clearly see that the magnitude of velocities for both neutron and nucleus remains the same before collision and after collision. However, before collision both of them are moving only along the x direction but after collision there is a change in their directions wh while magnitude remains the same. So, these are the three points that we have or uh, three uh, certain characteristics for the CM system that we have mentioned earlier which are proved here. Now, let us move to what we are trying to find. We know that the objective of having this elastic scattering is to reduce the kinetic energy of the neutron. So, let us calculate the ratio of this energy before collision and after collision after collision before collision the energy was this half m v square after collision if v prime represents the actual velocity then uh, velocity with respect to the lap scale that is then this is the kinetic energy of this and correspondingly we get this to be equal to the velocity squared ratios. Here on the left I have the diagram this is as per the lap scale system and this is as per the CM system theta is the angle at which the neutron gets scattered as per the lap scale whereas theta c is the angle at which it gets scattered as per the cm scale. Now, uh, we can uh, velocity being a vector we can uh, get as per their components that is uh, v prime cos theta has to be equal to v c m plus u prime cos theta c. Basically here just seeing this this is the v prime this is the actual velocity and if we take their components this should be this is the u prime and then uh, let me read write uh, say relative velocity this is u prime and this is the v c m and this is u prime or I should say okay. Then if we follow the triangular law of this uh, vector addition then we can add them together and this resultant should be the actual velocity v prime where theta represents the intruder angle this angle is the theta and accordingly we can write this particular expression that is v prime cos theta c should be equal to the v c m plus u prime cos theta c v prime cos theta is equal to v c m plus u prime cos theta c 
and their uh, sign counterpart taking the ratio the angles as per the lap scale which is theta and angle as per the cm scale is theta c we can get a relation between them. And then we substitute couple of relations which we have derived earlier. You remember if you go back couple of slides the v c m was expressed earlier in terms of v and u prime was also expressed in terms of v. So, we put this back and we arrive at this particular expression or uh, assuming capital M by small m to be equal to a we get this tan theta to be equal to a sin theta c divided by 1 plus a cos theta c. So, uh, using this uh, vector combination or the vector components we can find a relation between the angle of scattering as per the lap scale which is theta and as per the cm scale which is theta c. Now, we uh, squared the both the equations and add them together then uh, this is what we get and by changing the sides or dividing this entire equation by v square we arrive at this particular form and putting capital M by small m nearly equal to a this is what we end up to this is of what our interest what we were looking for. Often we define a collision operator as alpha equal to a minus 1 by a plus 1 whole square. Then uh, 1 minus alpha is equal to 4 a by a plus 1 whole square and 1 plus alpha is equal to 2 into a plus 1 plus a square by a plus 1 whole square. If we uh, put this back to the equation that we have derived here this one we relate to this 1 minus alpha and 1 plus alpha this is a final expression that is e prime equal to half into 1 plus alpha plus 1 minus alpha cos theta c into e. It is an extremely important relation you remember e is the this e is the energy of the neutron before collision and e prime is the energy of the neutron after collision. Uh, cos theta c is the angle of deflection or angle of scattering as per the CM system and alpha is this is the definition. So, alpha is a function of only the mass number of the moderator nucleus. So, it is a property of the moderator for different moderator value of uh, a will be different, but once a moderator is given alpha is a constant E is the kinetic energy before collision. So, suppose I give you a pair of a, a pair of neutron and nucleus then both E and alpha are specified then the energy after collision is governed solely by the angle at which it can get deflected. There can be several situations say when theta c is equal to 0 that is no scattering of neutron or neutron is not at all changing any direction that basically signifies there is there is no collision the neutron has not at all collided with the neutron sorry nucleus and if we put this expression then you will get e prime equal to e there is no loss of energy because there has not been any collision. If we put theta equal to 90 degree then cos theta equal to 0 e prime is equal to half into 1 plus alpha into e. More interestingly if we put theta equal to 180 degree that is the neutron is having a complete change in its direction and is going back from wherever it has come from which is often referred as a head on collision uh, for 180 theta c equal to 180 degree cos theta c equal to minus 1 and accordingly we get e prime is equal to alpha e. It is the maximum energy loss that a neutron may suffer like we can also calculate this say this expression for uh, e prime is given to us now and as I have mentioned for a given neutron nucleus pair capital E and alpha both are constant and therefore, value of E prime depends solely on theta c. So, we can always calculate what is the value of theta c for which the E prime becomes a minima and uh, if we do the calculation uh, as d prime d theta c this is differentiate this with respect to theta c and equate that to 0 then this should give you theta c is equal to pi or 180 degrees. And you can also check that this actually refers to a minimum value for this E prime that is when there is a head on collision between neutron and the stationary nucleus then the neutron is expected to suffer maximum amount of energy loss or maximum amount of loss in its kinetic energy and its magnitude is alpha into E that is it is again depending on alpha. Now, alpha in turn depends on A as per this relation. So, for different value of A uh, we can get different values of alpha. Say for example, what is the lightest possible uh, 
or smallest possible value for a we can have or the lightest possible element of course that is a equal to 1 that is that refers to hydrogen if we put a equal to 1 here then alpha equal to 0 so if we use that is 1 h 1 that is proton as a moderator then alpha equal to 0 and e prime is actually half into half into 1 plus cos theta c yes, to e which is the maximum possible or smallest possible value of kinetic energy after collision that we can have uh, using any moderator and again this depends on the value of uh, theta c the actual value of e prime. So, if we now use the head on collision that is theta equal to 180 degree then e prime equal to 0 that means it refers to a complete loss of energy or you can say if a neutron of whatever may be the initial energy level of neutron it comes and collides with a proton collides with a hydrogen nucleus and suffers a head on collision or you can say a neutron of any energy coming and, and having a head on collision with a hydrogen nucleus head on collision means it is having a 180 degree change in its direction then it is expected to lose entire of its energy or its kinetic energy after the collision will become 0. So, then what is the uh, gist that we can get from this entire discussion of course, theta c is something not in our control e is the energy that we have from the incoming beam of neutron and our target is to reduce this e to the thermal neutron level at the earliest. Of course, uh, in a moderator generally the neutron or requires to go through repeated collisions before it can reach to the thermal neutron level. Uh, but if you are talking about a single energy reduction in a single collision, then E is the energy with which it is coming and we have to choose a proper moderation, moderator material. Theta c is something that we do not that is not in our control rather th it is more a probabilistic definition a neutron can get deflected to any possible angle after uh, having a collision with this. Then what we can control that is of course, this alpha or rather we can control this A. Then what conclusion can we draw in terms of the preferable value of A to so that we can have a larger reduction in the energy. We should ideal cases having A equal to 1 because for any given value of theta that gives you the lowest possible value of E prime uh, and hence we should always want A to be as low as possible a smaller value of A will give you uh, a much larger reduction in energy. Just compare this particular uh, case situation with something that is having a very high value of A. Like say if we take uranium 238 that is A equal to 238 then alpha is equal to 237 by 239 whole square which is virtually equal to 1 and uh, if you put the value of uh, alpha here in this uh, original expression then correspondingly E prime is equal to alpha equal to 1 for very that is the maximum limit of alpha that we can have which is approximately equal to 1 or tends to 1 and if you put alpha equal to 1 in this expression then this term goes to 0 and we get E prime nearly equal to E that is there is hardly any reduction in the energy of the neutron. So, while uh, when theta equal to 0 we that is no collision situation we can not have any reduction in energy also if the moderator nucleus is having very high mass number then also uh, the energy reduction is extremely small or almost insignificant. So, it is always preferable to use a smaller value of A, but practically the change or the uh, in the direction or the value of theta is not something that is in our hand rather it is uh, possible to have any value of uh, deflection or any scattering angle. Therefore, we need to go to some kind of statistical averaging or some probability distribution. A probability distribution function can be defined as number of favorable events scattering between some angle theta c and d theta c divided by the total number of events. Uh, let us uh, discuss this with respect to this diagram. Here 
a neutron is coming whose uh, mass number or uh, its mass is assumed to be nearly equal to 1 and it is striking a nucleus which is uh, situated here. Initially nucleus is here that is at the center of this circle. After the collision the neutron can get scattered into any possible direction then this probability distribution function uh, says what is the probability of finding a neutron in a very small angle around this theta c or probability at angle this theta c if we take very small infinitesimal angle this d theta c it is an infinitesimal small solid angle you can say. Then this uh, function should be equal to the amount of area available over this infinitesimal portion through is neutron can pass through divided by the total area of the sphere that is the neutron can pass through any possible direction of a sphere or as per the any of the rays of the sphere. So, if capital R represents the radius of the sphere then total area available is 4 pi r square and the area of this infinitesimal small portion then how much is this? Here we are talking about this particular uh, segment basically. Here 2 pi r sin theta is the corresponding thing multiplied by d theta c that represents the thickness of this particular uh, conical portion and so this ratio represents your probability distribution function. Assuming isotropic scattering because uh, isotropic scattering refers to in all possible direction the intensity of uh, scattering remains the same and also taking r equal to 1 this reduces to sin theta d theta c by 2 or you can also write this as minus half of d of cos theta c. Now, we have already seen e prime is equal to half into 1 plus alpha plus 1 minus alpha cos theta c into e. So, cos theta c can be represented in this form and d of cos theta c can be represented like this. So, take it back here then what we are getting is p e prime d e prime is equal to or this probability distribution function can be represented as minus d e prime divided by 1 minus alpha into e. Finally, a very important concept that is uh, quite often used to characterize this moderator. Firstly, uh, just uh, waiting here in this slide. So far, we have uh, discussed if one neutron collides with the nucleus, then how much uh, a decremented energy it can have that we have seen that depend to depend on the kinetic energy that is uh, dependent on the kinetic energy of the neutron very much dependent on the mass number of the nucleus moderator nucleus and also depending on the angle of scattering. But whenever a beam of neutron strikes a nucleus we now know from our previous modules that it is not a job of a single neutron rather we need to supply a large number of neutrons to have any significant rate of interaction because most part inside the nucleus is hollow or void. Now, whenever such a beam of neutron is approaching a nucleus, it is expected to have all possible scattering angles. That is while some neutron may get scattered by say an angle of 10 degrees, some other may get scattered by 120 degrees and uh, maybe just 1 in a million is uh, suffering some kind of uh, head on collision. So, uh, this probability distribution function that allows us to get an idea about the probabilistic energy distribution over a sphere around the around the nucleus initial position of the nucleus that is. And accordingly we can calculate the average energy of the neutron after the collision as this thing we know E is the initial energy. So, if the uh, after collision the maximum possible value of energy it can have is E and similarly the lowest possible value it can have is equal to alpha into E which happens when theta equal to 180 degrees. So, uh, we can perform this integration now P e prime d e prime we all already seen in the uh, previous slide here we have seen that P e prime d e prime is equal to minus d e prime by 1 minus alpha into E. So, we are putting it back here. Now, uh, E is the initial energy of the neutron and alpha is a property of the moderator. So, for a given neutron nuclear sphere, we have uh, this term to be constant or this denominator is a constant. So, we can perform this integration only over E prime and we are getting that average energy after collision, average energy of the neutron after collision is just 1 plus alpha into E by 2. 
but the more important definition is of a logarithmic energy decrement which is basically the ratio of energy before collision divided by kinetic energy average kinetic energy that is is after collision. Here we are not at all dealing with a single neutron rather we are dealing more with a beam of neutrons as uh, different neutrons in a single beam can undergo different amount of scattering. So, the energy of the neutron after collision also will be varying a lot, but this uh, E prime bar that is this quantity averages that over all possible uh, directions. And now logarithmic energy decrement is represented as energy before collision divided by this average kinetic energy after collision and take a log of that. So, that we have log E minus log E prime bar. If we put the expression for uh, E prime bar, then this is what we end up to and uh, putting the expression of this P E prime D E prime, this is what we are getting that is integration limits limits the same because E is the largest possible energy after collision and alpha is E is the smallest possible energy after collision for any given value of alpha. Now, how to perform this integration? this uh, looks a bit uh, complicated because we are having a log of E by E prime that is available and uh, E prime is the independent variable also. Let us assume some uh, chi is equal to E prime by E. So, putting that here d chi will be equal to d E prime because capital E is a constant capital E uh, we know this prime will be equal to d prime by e. So, that can be put back here and actually I think I have a I have made a typing error uh, here I have made a typing error here this e should not be a part of this expression it is uh, because d prime by e is equal to this particular term. So, 1 minus alpha being a constant comes out of the integration and another important chain is the limit of the integration. Now, when E prime is equal to E, I am struggling to write this particular uh, symbol, chi is equal to 1. So, lower limit becomes 1 and the upper limit for E prime is equal to alpha into E accordingly this is equal to alpha. So, this is the upper limit. Now, putting these expressions and uh, also as I mentioned this E goes off here, this E is not present this, then we have uh, log x dx, we can integrate this to over the given limits of 1 to alpha to get 1 plus alpha by 1 minus alpha of log alpha. So, logarithmic energy decrement you can see the final expression that we are getting that includes only alpha or it is a sole function of the moderator it does not depend upon the energy of the or neutron or initial energy of the neutron at all. So, average decrease in the energy level of the of a neutron beam that very interestingly is not at all dependent upon the energy of the neutron with which it is coming rather it depends only on the moderator or it is a sole function of the moderator nucleus. Uh, now, we know alpha is equal to a minus 1 by a plus 1 whole square. So, if we put this back we get zeta is equal to this excellent expression which is again a sole function of capital A and for any value of capital we can calculate the value of corresponding energy decrement or average decrease in the energy. Like when a tends to 1 zeta tends to 1 and e prime bar is equal to e by small e which is the maximum possible decrease in the average neutron energy. When narrow number of uh, generally we need to have several collisions for the neutron, so that its energy can be reduced from some given initial level to some given final level. This logarithmic energy decrement also allows us to calculate the total number of collisions required to slow down the neutron from an initial level to a final level and this can be calculated using the definition of zeta it can be calculated as log of E n initial by E n final divided by zeta. These are some sample values, let us say when H is equal to 1 that is uh, hydrogen A equal to 1, if we put that then directly we are getting zeta equal to 1 and corresponding collision to reduce say if E n i is equal to 2 MeV and final energy is equal to 
1 electron volt, then we are getting the corresponding 15 collisions uh, will be required. This all numbers are actually scaled up that is if we are getting 14 point something that has been uh, converted to 15. So, getting 15 collisions for this. Similarly, when d equal to 2 you can calculate the value of zeta oh, ok from the source I have taken this does not seem to be correct if you put the numbers it should be 0725, but it will require 20 or collisions and uh, to reduce a neutron energy from 2 MeV to 1 electron volt. Similarly, you can see like if we take a very heavy isotope like around 238 value of zeta is extremely small 0 0.008 and more than 1800 collisions are required to have this amount of reduction. Just compare this number for hydrogen it is only 15 whereas, here it is 1812 same very large number of uh, collisions will be required. And we can uh, clearly see as the number of collisions or as the mass number of the uh, moderator nucleus goes on like in this direction the corresponding number of collision is also increasing continuously as the value of zeta is decreasing. Quite often the moderator material uh, comprises of several kinds of isotopes or several kinds of elements. In that case we need to define an average value of zeta or weighted average and that is defined as the uh, summation of uh, scattering cross section. A summation of the scattering cross section into the logarithmic energy decrement for any component divided by the summation of the scattering cross section for all components. This is slightly confusing here this symbol here refers to summation however, for macroscopic cross section also we are using the same symbol. However, here it refers to the summation only. Then what should be the desirable properties a moderator should have? This is something we have mentioned earlier a moderator must have large scattering cross section and low absorption cross section. If the scattering cross section is high it will be able to uh, capture a good amount of energy reduction in just a single collision. Whereas, uh, it should have very low absorption capacity if the moderator itself starts to uh, absorb the neutrons then there will be a neutron dart that is created inside the nucleus and uh, the reaction can sustain the chain reaction. But now we are also seeing that having high sigma is no, alone is not sufficient rather the logarithmic energy decrement also needs to be high. So, that in a small number of attempts we can reduce the energy of a neutron from some very high value to some reasonably low value generally at the thermal level. But what else the energy decrement can uh, depend on? That should depend on the number of nucleus moderator nucleus that is that is present in the system. If the number of moderator nucleus is more then there will be more number of uh, interactions or the chances of interactions scattering that is that has to be directly proportional to the number of moderating nuclei that is present in the system. So, we want a high nuclei density for the moderator. Now, these three terms quite often are combined into these two definitions moderating power and moderating ratio. Moderating power is defined as zeta n into sigma s that is uh, the it is the product of this three quantities logarithmic energy decrement into the nuclear density of the moderator into the scattering cross section. Here this capital sigma is refers to the macroscopic scattering cross section because we know this uh, scattering cross section or any macroscopic cross section is sigma n into the nuclear density into the microscopic cross section and we can use say S subscript for both macroscopic and microscopic cross sections. This. In the previous slide of course, the same symbol was used to denote summation, but here it is the uh, macroscopic cross section. This moderating power shows the efficiency of moderator in slowing down the neutrons. It is quite often called the macroscopic slowing down power or MSDP. Other is moderating ratio which is the, the new energy decrement logarithmic energy decrement multiplied by the ratio of scattering to absorption cross section which we can write as uh, if we multiply with both numerator and denominator with n then we can convert that to the macroscopic cross sections. So, it shows the efficiency of the moderation without have absorption. If uh, So, what kind of values for this moderating power and moderating ratio we should prefer? Of course, both should be high. We should prefer a higher value of moderating power because in a single collision larger amount of energy reduction is possible. Similarly, moderating ratio also should be high because for given amount of absorption 
or given amount of scatter in the absorption should be very low. This is some uh, numbers of some of the isotopes that are present earlier. Like we have seen uh, helium or sorry we have seen that hydrogen and deuterium both are excellent as uh, moderator. Hydrogen having a mass number of 1 is the best possible material that we can have as moderator. But the problem for hydrogen or deuterium is that they, it is, they are gaseous in nature and therefore, the nuclear density per unit or number of nucleus present per unit volume should be very low. That is why those materials are generally not used rather they are converted to their compounds in the form of common water or the heavy water D2 and those are used as a moderator. These two are the most preferred moderator that we can have in any kind of nucleus whereas, the common nucleus or common water is the most preferred choice. Uh, heavy water is generally used in CANDU types of reactors or reactors where the re neutron is highly enriched. We shall be discussing about neutron enrichment in the next module. Uh, and you can see to reduce the energy level from say 1 mega electron volt to the thermal neutron level, whereas the common water requires 19 number of collisions, heavy water requires 35. There are a few other materials also quite often used like helium uh, and beryllium has been tried in a few reactors recently. Boron uh, not the best choice because its moderating ratio is very low, boron has a high absorption cross section. So, while its slowing down power is uh, not that bad, you can see the helium has an extremely low slowing down power something like this. Whereas, the um, it is the lowest among this and this is the highest. So, as per the macroscopic slowing down power or moderating ratio definitely common water is the best choice, whereas the helium is extremely poor from that point of view. Whereas, if you compare from moderating ratio point of view this is not quite bad, but this is extremely high because deuterium has an extremely small absorption cross section it hardly absorbs any neutron that rather whatever neutron comes that gets scattered and therefore, it is an extremely high moderating ratio. On the contrary as I just mentioned boron has extremely small absorption cross section because it absorbs a good amount of neutrons therefore, it is not at all a good choice as a moderator. Uh, carbon that is graphite that is that is also used in certain kinds of reactors. It is also has a quite high uh, moderating ratio because it does not absorb too much, but it is uh, moderating power is uh, lower even lower than boron. So, if we see only from moderating uh, power point of view this looks to be the best one However, moderating ratio point of view this is extremely good the deuterium or heavy water. But this three parameter alone are not sufficient to justify the choice of a moderator rather there are several associated issues that also we must look into like the chemical stability. Uh, as in nuclear reactor we expect to have high temperature involvement quite often and the certain materials may become soft at higher, uh, higher temperature or may start to go through some kind of chemical reactions. So, it should be chemically compatible with the with other kind other materials present inside and also should be uh, strong enough to sustain higher temperature. That structural compatibility is the issue it should not uh, get deformed or should not uh, just buckle down at higher temperatures. Uh, that is another reason of not using gaseous material like carbon or graphite while uh, carbon uh, we can use in the form of gaseous materials like carbon dioxide etc. Graphite is always a much better choice and that is generally used not in the reactor where we have water present rather it is used where gas is used as the coolant. So, more in gas cooled reactors graphite is used as a moderator whereas, beryllium has been tried in uh, certain reactors. Another the cost and availability I have mentioned heavy water is having a very high moderating ratio and its moderating power is also not that bad. So, it is probably the best choice among the 6 that those are listed here, but it is extremely costly on contrary this is uh, cheap very very easily available and handling this one is also not at all difficult 
and that is why common water is generally the most preferred moderator that you will find everywhere. So, that brings us to the end of uh, this particular module. Let us uh, try to summarize whatever we have learned in our third module. We have seen that absorption of thermal neutrons by fissile nucleus can lead to fission or non fission capture depending upon the relative uh, fraction of fission cross section or absorption cross section. Uranium 235 is the only natural occurring fission a fission fissile isotope uh, which is uh, which can undergo fission uh, only by absorbing thermal neutrons, but plutonium 239 or uranium 233 can also be easily produced. There are isotopes like uranium 238 or thorium 232 which are fertile isotopes they cannot undergo fission after absorbing thermal neutrons, but can get converted to some kind of fissile nucleus with the process which is called breeding. We have also seen that the two fission fragments which are produced because of fission reactions are not likely to have equal mass number rather their mass numbers will vary and the difference between their value of mass number that reduces with increase in the mass number of the parent nucleus. Absorption cross section uh, varies almost linearly that is decreases almost linearly with the kinetic energy or velocity of the neutron in the 1 by v region, uh, but uh, there is also a resonance capture region in between while uh, the resonance absorption co uh, cross sections are quite low for the fissile materials, but materials like uranium 238 can have extremely high resonance absorption cross section and therefore, it is a zone that better to be avoided or at least we should try to uh, make the neutron flow through this zone at the earliest in order to avoid the uh, absorb cross section avoid the resonance absorption. Energy lost by the neutron during a single elastic collision or single elastic scattering is found to be maximum in case of head on collision and also when the mass number of the moderating nucleus approaches unity. Therefore, it is always preferable to use some kind of uh, moderating material whose mass number is quite low preferably quite close to 1. And finally, logarithmic energy decrement was uh, defined uh, to express the average energy reduction of a beam of neutrons during a single collision and it is found to be very interestingly it was found to be independent of the initial energy of the neutron depending rather on the atom mass number of the moderating nucleus only. And finally, it is desirable to have high moderating power and moderating ratio for the selected moderator along with several commercial factors like cost, availability and other compatibility things. So, that is the end of our third module. There are several other topics which are related to fission reaction, but I thought about keeping that uh, as a part of our fourth module where we shall be discussing about the chain reactions and the neutron diffusion equation. Thanks for your attention. The uh, you shall be having access to the assignments. So please solve the assignments, and if you have any doubt, any where you face any issue, don't hesitate to uh, mail us back. Thanks. You.